Hey, what's up, garden friends? Hey, Turbo, how you doing, baby? That's a good boy, Turbo. Jeff here, hope you're doing well. I'm great, just letting the dog run around a little bit, I'm trying to keep him out of the pool, you know, still doing the whole thing, so he's neutered, gotta keep him dry. I'm trying to get him some exercise. Storms are about to move in, and it looks like it's gonna rain off and on for a few days. If you saw the previous video, then, well, most of this has been explained. Palm trees were just delivered. Got a big Alexander over there. Adenidia here, Roblini, a couple queen palms, and then there's some others. They're in the last video. You'll be seeing them in this one too. What I need to get moving on here before the weather starts to get nasty, I need to get some annuals in the ground. Look at them. They're all stretched out. These need to be planted up. I have two flats here of sun impatience. The orange and the tropical rose, which is this one right there, then the oranges, well, it's one that's orange, right there. I was going to use those in the pool planters, the planters that are down here on the other end, right there. I think I only have three more of the oranges, though, so I don't know how well that's going to work out. But I just, I'm just kind of in the mood to just, like, throw the camera on a tripod, start tossing stuff in the ground. And then I would really like to handle this mess right here, get some things tidied up, some more plants put in place, and just make it make it look nicer. I have a little bistro set to put in that spot. Hopefully by the end of this video, I'm gonna have this spot looking nice, looking a lot better. And then we'll have made a decent dent in the annuals that need to go into the ground right here. I've already, I mean, just getting those two flats of impatience is gonna take care of a lot of it. And there's some perennials in here too that I need to get those planted, but you get it. Let's just get moving. Probably going to be a shorter video. Don't see the forecast this week being the kind where I can be out here all that much. So. This is, this is probably it. And then I have the whole situation going with the bird. I can't leave him alone for too long, and it is unusually cold. Very unusually chilly for this time of year in St. Louis. I wanted to do this area up here with the variegated sun and patience, the tropical rose and the orange. I was going to alternate them, but uh, I got all the orange ones that they had at that nursery. And I think that even though this end of the pool doesn't match that one as far as there being hydrangeas and then palm trees, it would still be nice to have a little bit of continuity and I could do that with the sun impatience. Uh, we can talk more about that when I get to that part, if I even get to it. There's a bird's nest in one of those and I'm on the fence as to whether or not I wanna get in there and mess with that spot. I'm excited, ready to get this done. I'm gonna put the dog inside, who's currently chewing on a sprinkler head and start getting things in the ground. Come on, Turbo, come on, come on. Bullbogger. These things speed everything up. I don't see myself going in here with like biotone starter or anything like that i have a good layer of compost down on top of everything as it is so when i backfill that should be enough for everything maybe i'll add some slow release i don't know one thing i always try and remember with this spot here is to have them planted up high enough that there's some space in front because when i plant them too low they mound in over this drainage area the plants in the way i a drain in here need to keep it clear Who remembers these? Y'all remember? Try to scan in index. Did these as clippings, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago? In the growth space, they've taken in, nicely taken and they have put on roots. Nicely, looking pretty good. In years past, I have done the Tradescantia polita in the front here. It's nice, just the purple heart plants. I thought I would switch it up and give these a shot. The afternoon sun might be kind of intense for them. I, know, I tried them in some planters last year that got a good amount of light and they did fine. So yeah, we'll see. If not, throw some creeping Jenny or some regular purple heart plants in there. Let's have fun with it and try to make it work. All right. Admittedly, like not the most grandiose before and after. I'm so sorry. The neighbor kids version of playing is to scream like they're being murdered. It's all going to take time to fill in. Have what? Five. Yes. One, two, three, four, five of the tropical rose sun impatience. Y'all saw me plant those. And then a row of those Tradescantia nanooks down in the front. Those will fill out and look nice over time. And I also, it doesn't really look centered. Things are a little off kilter from not having the croton over here anymore. But, well, technically it really isn't centered. But centered with the window, I plopped in a uh, Colocasia white lava. It just looks like a typical Colocasia, but it gets some white streaking, some white borders and stripes in the foliage. It takes it some time to get there, but hopefully by July I'll have some nice big colorful leaves there right behind the colorful leaves that are right in front of more colorful leaves. It might be a bit much. I don't know. We will see. That was something I thought about 
in the last video where I was talking about how I was contemplating whether or not to move the croton that was right here. And I figured since there's going to be so much color over here anyways, I could go ahead and bump that over to the other side of the door. I think that'll look nice. I hit the ground running with this one. Didn't film it. I had mentioned, I don't know, in a different video at some point that I was going to hold off on planting these two containers up just for the time being because there's a robin's nest up there. I really don't want to disturb them. I like to leave nature alone and leave it be. But what I decided to do is I got all the plants ready, pulled them out of their pots and everything, got them into a couple buckets, and then I just sat and waited because I watched these robins chase those grackles off all the time. They both took off. Mama was in there, but I don't know. One was up there, one was down there. Took off, chased the birds. I bolted down here, plopped those in there like super quick, really, really fast. Under a minute, just boom, popped them in there, filled them in. And then I took a little bit more time with this one. So it looks a little bit better. These are essentially the same as the containers down there, but with the vanilla strawberry panicle hydrangeas up top. I guess they're not the same. We've got adenidia palms down there and all different types of petunias, but yeah, the planting, fairly similar. Tropical rose sun and patient, little dirty, need to water these in. And then the orange, vigorous orange sun and patient. So there's one on each side, Two of the tropical roses. Turns out I did have four. One was just mislabeled, had an orange flower on it, so that worked out. That aspect of it, the same on each end. And have four, two on each side, Supertunia Vista Jazzberries. Oh, and uh, Sweet Caroline, Sweetheart Lime Ipomia. Is that what that one is? I don't remember. Proven winners, the names on these plants. What does it say? Sweet Caroline, Sweetheart Lime. One right there, one right there, one right there, one right there. I made sure to put them just underneath the Tropical Rose Sun Impatience just because I think that this color, that limey green goes better with that pink than I would expect it to go with the orange on the others. I think they'll highlight nicely. It'll look nice and lush and vibrant. Might give the orange ones a little bit of a cutback. Otherwise, I'd say these are good to go. Oh, and this container. I said we were gonna talk a little bit about this section down here. Try and step back give it some distance so I'm not intimidating the birds that are nesting in there. This side of the steps right here does not get anywhere near as much light as that side over there. So they're never really probably going to look all that even. So to combat that, I put a ton of slow release fertilizer and with this side did a basically normal amount on that end over there. If they're not getting the light, then you gotta compensate somehow, and that's with nutrients. There should still be enough light to keep these going. Sun Impatience, Sweet Potato Vines, and the Supertunia Vistas, specifically the Vistas, are normally a good choice for a spot like this because all of those plants are ones that do better with full sun, but they'll normally still do all right if they're getting less light, especially the Sun Impatience. Even though they say Sun Impatience, they can go lower light they're just not going to have quite as many flowers on them. You might have to get in and prune them back some more to keep them more full and bushy because they'll tend to get more leggy. And that's going to be the same thing with these petunias, the Supertunia Vista Jazzberries, the bubblegum. I've had that in, I'm not going to say shade, but part shade, and it still flowered. It was more long and leggy. It still flowered though, but it just wasn't like the nice, big, bouncy, like lush thing we would expect with it. I'm having trouble describing it. You get it. It's not going to be completely even, but that's okay. I think that these plants were a good option for that sort of combination. I'd like to stick some caladiums or something in these, but again, the sun, shade, I could go ahead and like dig in and do some research just to find some that look very similar because there are caladiums for sun and there are caladiums for shade and see if there's something that meets in the middle. But I really, with these sun impatience, those are going to be so full. There's not really going to be any room for caladiums in these anyways, so I'd say this is good. And here comes the rain. Hiding out under the umbrella. I'm going to keep working though. I'm going to get those pots put away, move those chairs to the garage. Those don't need to sit out here. People can just come and get them if they want to use them. You can just walk around, bring them around, get the top of that cabinet opened up and make this look better. Maybe get that other table down here and start plopping some plants in this spot. We'll be right back. Hopefully things will look a lot better over here. All right, maybe it won't be back until tomorrow, but hopefully it's going to look better. There's a lot of stuff to do over here. Uh, well, it's an improvement. I have a little bit of a rant. I'm going to try and hold back. I'm probably not going to hold back. I hate this. I hate this bistro set. Focus on the positive though. Got this all cleaned up. Things are put away and organized in the cabinet. Got a pot full of coconuts over there. They have to be up where Turbo can't get them because he eats them and it constipates them. 
the joys of having dogs. Clamshell, want to get that planted up with some succulents. Got the stuff that was up against the house all put away. I had some like old, just like random decor. Don't need that anymore. I do think it'd be fun to do a living wall kind of thing over here, which I've never done because the spot gets so incredibly hot during the summer. But these queen palms may shade that a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna give that like a week and uh, really pay more attention to what the light's like in this spot because that will also determine what I decide to put inside of that clamshell. Now I just need to get these pots spread around, plop some plants in them. I think I'll probably just set the plants where I want them to go for right now. Just everything's so wet. That way people get an idea of what's going on over here. I need to power wash this too, but it's raining. I don't really see a point in doing that. Especially when I have all this planting and stuff I want to do over here. And then I just, I really, I hate this table and I want it to go away. I'm over it, I don't like it. I have a family member who swears they sit in it all the time and they'd be so upset if we got rid of it. I have never in my life seen this person sit at this table. The table doesn't make any sense. It's a bistro set, but look at the chairs. They don't push in all the way. So it takes up more room than the tables that replaced last year. It doesn't take up more room. It takes up about the same amount of room as those tables, but it's a smaller place to put your stuff. And there's that argument of, well, it's extra seating for people. We have seating out here. I counted it. One, two, three, we got five down there. Can fit 10 over here at this table. The folding chairs in the garage, all in all. Like very quick, easy seating for about 22 people out here. This is not necessary. You never have 22 people over here, like ever, especially like the age of the cooties. No way. And if I did, I have lots of folding chairs and folding tables in the basement. So it's not, I don't. I like the idea of a bistro set, one where the chairs actually push in all the way and it doesn't take up this much space. But this one, it's old and it's ugly. It needs some new paint. The cushions need to be scrubbed, but I don't love this enough to do anything with it to make it look nicer. I just want it gone and out of my life. Comment down below. Can we get this like 100 to 1? Back me up. Donate the table. Put something else over there or nothing at all, please. And I'm being dramatic. I don't hate it that much. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't get it. Nobody sits at it. I'm not going to sit at it. It takes up a lot of space for what it is. And it's it's just not something I like enough to take the time to fix it up. I'd rather get rid of it. Got all the new furniture last year. Why, 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 why? There's no reason to hold on to this. I'm sure there are lots of people who would love to have it, but I'm not one of them. Okay, end of rant. That felt good to get off my chest. I do think that it would be a good idea to go ahead and get this pot glued back together. There's just one piece missing right here. It would be like... Super simple to get that put back together. Gotta be careful setting that down on the table. Wouldn't want to break the glass. Went ahead and I wet this down. I just use Gorilla Glue with my broken pottery. Can you see? I mean, you know what it is, right? I probably don't need to see the label. And I apply extremely generously to each piece. I like the clear Gorilla Glue. If it doesn't say clear on it, it might dry white and it tends to expand and pop out of the edges, which makes it look kind of sloppy. Can we get that in there any tighter? Don't want to push too hard. We don't want to break the precious table. Got some seepage. I actually don't mind with the clear. It almost ends up looking sort of glossy. I realize I wouldn't even look in my viewfinder. Hopefully you could see what's going on over here. Then the bungee cord will hold that secure while it dries for like, I don't know, day, something like that. Usually it dries faster than that. And that pot's gonna be good to go. All right, now I just need to spread these pots out mock up how I'm going to get them planted, just really play around with it and then be done. Things will be looking nice out here. The peach trees are on the way to the driveway. They're not just hanging out there. I wouldn't just let them sit on the patio like that. I really like it. I like what I did over here. Look at it, look at it. So much color. Now imagine things without the hangers on the pots and just being more tidy and actually planted, but that'd be nice. It's just too wet. There's no reason to pot these up right now. When this is dry, I'm going to move this shrub in this blue pot into that. That is a Hamelia petens firecracker plant, fun plant. Hummingbirds like it. It's going to need more sun than it's probably going to get right here. So that will probably have to go over by the hot tub wall. Inca Cora Cascade. I think that will look nice coming down the front of that seashell with a Supertunia Vista Indigo, one of the smaller Supertunia Vistas. Adds some nice color, some purple, help cool and tone things down because there's a lot of brightness and a lot of color over here. A New Guinean patient that I don't know the name of, but I absolutely love the flowers on that one. Same thing with this cordial in front of Casa back here. Gorgeous plant, bold foliage, lots of color. Don't know the name of it. Sorry about that. Pink dragon wing begonia, three of the canary wing begonias, which are kind of crispy. I think they'll like this spot a lot better. 
a Cordelin Fruticasa Kiwi. I'm pretty sure that's what this one is, which will be up higher when that's actually potted. It's sitting way down in there inside that container. That'll add some height in that spot. And then the San Francisco Begonia, which is beautiful. One of my favorites. And then I have the two Tropical Rose Sun Impatience just kind of sitting here. I'd like to have one of them over here, but I'm really going to have to pay attention to the amount of light that's in this spot. And I don't want a lot of pots on the ground. One of those may go, or maybe both of them, they might go somewhere else. Traditionally, I'd always put those there, this right here, always had one right there. But last year, this Robolini palm, it gotten a lot taller and more full and they just were a little bit more scraggly. It just wasn't quite enough light for them. It's probably how those ones under that hydrangea are gonna look at some point this summer. You'll get to see what I'm talking about there. I think the New Guinea will do better in this spot, but I am gonna have to pay attention to light here because you know, dragon's wing begonias, they can take some light. The canary wings, a little bit less is better because they tend to get crispy. So this is one of those things where I'm gonna have to think on it some. I think the vinca and the petunia should be okay because they're towards the front and I can always shift those around very easily to get them more light. And really any, I mean, these are little plants. I can move them if there's not enough light. I love how this spot came out. Lots of color. Oh, and I tossed an Akuba over there. Just because why not? Everything's all variegated and colorful. Just adds some more color to where it's already really colorful. I thought it would look nice because it's a cooler tone. Cooler tones help kind of settle things and put them together. I don't feel, I feel like I didn't say anything just then. Calming contrast. How about that? Does that, does that make more sense? Probably not. It's getting late, y'all. This video is actually just what would have been the second part of last weekend's video. I believe, like I said, my brain scrambled where I got all the palms. So the palms showed up, did all the palm stuff, and then said goodbye in that video and picked up the camera immediately and started working on this one because of the forecast. So it's been a long day. Been out here most of the day, in and out, actually. You want to say hi, Cosmo? Spending time with Cosmo, making sure he gets lots of attention. He's enjoying the Cardinals game. The bird really likes baseball. I actually mean that, too. He watches the games. I'm so proud. That's my boy. It's actually sort of sad when you think about it. The sound of the crowd sometimes sounds like my other parrot that passed. I think that's why he likes it. I've gotten like goosebumps a few times because I thought I could hear the bird and realize it was just the sound of the crowd. Jesus. Forgot there was a bird's nest right behind my head. I just came down here to look at how much better it looks without that crusty, nasty be sure set. So much more open. This drip is going to get twined back in there when I get these pulled up, which is probably a good project for while it's raining. Are not a lot of things you can do in the garden while it's raining, but pulling plants up, that's a good one. So I might work on that tomorrow. So many things are coming together. I'm loving it. Just getting those annuals potted up, having the palm tree up here over my head. There it is. Looking beautiful. Looking forward to handling this area right here. You get a lot of color over there. Lots of plants can be stuffed into that spot. Quick update on the pool planters, because it's been a while, couple weeks. I mean, it's only been like a week for me, but a couple weeks for y'all. Look at those honeys. They're looking beautiful. It's got some great color on them. Supertunia honeys, when it's nice and cool outside, get great color. And I'd say it made a pretty significant dent over here. Recreated a new mess. Need to shuffle things and get them put back together and looking nicer. There was, uh, there were a couple plants over here that I was probably going to squeeze over there. The Persian Shield, the Strobilanthes, those are nice and shiny. They look good in a spot with light at nighttime. They go very well with those canary wing begonias. So I'm going to try and squeeze those over there too. When I actually get around to planting, I'll be squeezing way more in here. I'll probably get some caladiums and all kinds of other things in those pots. Maybe that'll be in a video. If it is, it's just going to be like music and stuff because we already talked about it. So it's going to look kind of like this, but better, hopefully. And that's always the goal, right? The goal with a draft, which is what I consider. So this is just a warm up. Just getting things started. This is gonna look nice too, right? And all those impatience and the try to scanty start to fill out. I have this pack of stackies just sitting there because it needed some more light. Should probably put it somewhere else though. Hey Toby. Hey baby Toby. Pardon the dirty window, that's dog noses. Just cleaned it like two days ago. It only takes them like five minutes to get a window dirtied up again and they've done it. Need to just keep a bottle of Windex like right by the window. Oh and speaking of which, well, actually this has nothing to do with that. I have some solar powered lanterns coming in the mail that have like multicolored plexiglass jewels in them. They looked really cool from wind and weather. If uh, they show up before this video comes out, which it should, because this video won't be out for like a week and a half, I'll insert, are you seeing it? Do they look nice? Maybe? I hope so. And a quick apology about the like random recordings. Normally these Saturday videos, like it's what's actually gone on during that week. I have family coming in town and all the stuff with the bird. The way the forecast has been, I was like, I just need to just 
spend a day outside, get a bunch of videos and filming done so I can spend the time with the family and have time to edit. You get it. You know what it's like. It's summertime. I'm scrambling around trying to do more than there's actually hours for in the day. Fun, right? Table. My little rant. That was mostly just for jits and shigs. I'm not actually that upset about it. It's just a table. It's not that big a deal, but I mean, you, you gotta agree, right? It is an eyesore. The condition of the patio with all the storms and the dirt and everything from all these palm trees coming in and the planting. I'd say maybe it fits in just fine right now. There's so many other options. Like, look at this one. Doesn't that look nice? Nice colors. The chairs would push into it, I think. I mean, I assume that's the point, right? Is there a picture of it doing that? Yes, maybe. No, just the same. It looks like they scoot right in. Just have like an extra table over there. And I do, I wanted to use the spot, not to like sound like a hipster or anything, but it'd be a good spot to throw the yoga mat down in the morning and have the plants around, maybe toss a little fountain in the corner. Not that I need more water sounds out here, but it might be nice. You know, or there's this, that, that, that works too. <laughs> Next day again, things keep changing. I am so sorry. The last few videos have been so erratic. The way I had things planned out versus how they actually could have gone just really, really threw me off. Also noticed I had edited up to this point and the nighttime footage was really shaky. Sorry about that. Didn't realize the stabilization was that off when it was dark outside. I was going to cut this video short. Was that like 22, 23 minutes? You probably saw it. But the forecast, it hasn't completely changed, but it's not raining. If it's not raining, there's still plenty of work to be done. And I know y'all like the longer videos. The general philosophy when it comes to what I'm doing out here is I like to handle what's bugging me. And what's bugging me is all the stuff that needs to be planted. You know, with the annuals, they can only stay in these nursery cans for so long. So I would like to just handle it. Get it done, maybe, hopefully have the time to get this hot tub wall looking nice again. I have a lot of repots to do. I think that should wait though. I don't see that as top priority, like the mule palms does need to be repotted. I talked about the windmill palm. I just think I would feel so much better having more than this done, even though I got a lot done in just like a day and a half. Need to do some more. So I'm going to start with just like random things. The Tithonia, Mexican sunflower. Love these. I've mentioned before that I haven't had the best luck with these last couple of years. And I think that that's because the spot I was putting them in, which was all the way over here, moving the camera slowly to not make anybody, you can't even see it. Over there on the hill, behind those Adenidia palms. That's the spot where I've traditionally always planted natives and plants for the pollinators. It gets kind of shady in the afternoon and the soil there doesn't drain very well. But I have this spot over here, which it doesn't look like there's a lot of space here. There is. The, this will be tied up. It's a draper. We'll worry about that later in the summer. Not there yet. Don't have to deal with it right now. I want the Tithonia. Gosh, it's such a pretty plant. I want this more in the background there. This kitten. I'll shift things around because the Tithonias, I think these get like six, seven feet tall, something like that. Mine usually max out around four and a half, five feet, I feel like. But I know in places where things are more dry, what's that say? 24 to 36. Mmm. Maybe this is a different Tithonia. <laughs> I swear, I've had them get taller than me before, and I'm 5'11". Well, either way, if it only gets three feet tall, that's still plenty big to have in the background back here. Like I said, we'll move things around. So that's what's going to happen with that one. The Impatience. There's so many of them. I want to get moving on these two. Do that after the Tithonia. I'm thinking for these two planters up here on the wall, I'm going to do the variegated sun patients. I've had them all over the patio, so may as well have some of them over here and probably the Supertunia Vista bubblegums coming over the front. So I have a few more of those. I had them in here last year and they looked really, really nice. I was gonna do the jazzberries, but I used them all up. We'll talk more about that when I get to it. I'm gonna to get to work and just report back and see how everything went. Does that sound like a plan? I ended up doing something different here. The Tithonia, I was up there and I'm thinking there's not enough sun here for that. There used to be, but this, uh. Green Giant Arb and the Norway Spruce, those are starting to close in on each other. I don't think that that would do well there. So I said, my experience with these has been when it's really hot and really humid and then they have wet feet, they tend to rot out if they're not in full sun. And even then they can still rot out. I have another spot where I think that this would do better and actually look better. I did toss in a Firelight Tidbit Panicle Hydrangea. This is where I had wanted to put that all along. Since I was up there, I figured I'd dig the hole. This is a little one, only gets, I think, two to three feet tall and wide. It's nice pink and white flowers on it. Can we see that? Originally I was going to do like a swoop of them here, but I don't think that's going to work. The 
the arb did a lot more growing this spring than I expected it to. It, I mean, it did what a perennial does. It sat still for a couple of years, and now finally it's going, boof. I'm bursting out with growth, which is great, but I don't think that that would leave me room to continue this on. And I think that just having the one there is okay, because this is an area that I had intended on using for seeds. Cosmos and zinnias, which are all plants that are going to be sort of similar to this when it comes to light. I don't know, I might have to rethink some things. But I have these two other hydrangeas here, which are quick fire, no, wet lime punches. I just popped those up there, well, just a minute ago. These are going to get, I believe, five to six feet, or maybe four to six feet. So they are planted a little bit closer, but that's okay, because I wanted some screening there. And a similar flower to the wet lime punch, but with more red inside of it. Hey, Turbs, how you doing? He's having the time of his life running around with his friend up the hill. The Tithonia, I actually think that this would look really nice over here in this corner. Can I get to stand up? Sort of, yes. I'll probably want to bring it forward a little bit more this way. But it's going to need some space with the blue dune grass and the other plants that will be up here that you'll be seeing at some point. I think having that orange will be really nice. Might be a lot of bees <laughs> right by the entryway, but that's okay. If you're allergic to bees, just don't come over. Now, seeing as how this video has already jumped around, so much more than I had anticipated. Why not have another cut where it's another day? Because it started raining and ran out of time to get things done. Still haven't planted the Tithonia, haven't gotten anything planted. <laughs> it kept raining. Rain, rain, and more rain. So here's what I decided to do. Since I'm working in such short intervals and I feel like the pace the last couple of videos have been going at with everything I've had going on and trying to keep up with things, it's probably annoying and not that pleasing to watch. In that awkward timeline going on, I could, if it weren't like constantly changing light, just patch it all together with editing and nobody would know any different, but it's not how it goes when you're outside. The sky and clouds and nighttime, rain, those things. Y'all were smart, probably noticed those things, right? Back up to what I was saying. Here's what I'm gonna do. This is a Wednesday video, right? I believe so. And I forgot about the May garden tour. So Saturday, we'll do that. It was intended to be a Saturday video when I started filming it, hence why it's a vlog. Wednesday videos are normally like sitting down, doing a craft or talking about a plant, try and keep them shorter for the people who don't like longer videos. Since I need to get that garden tour out, that's gonna have to come out on Saturday. I don't wanna drag everybody along doing all kinds of work out here, which we've already done an awful lot. I don't wanna keep that going for like another 20 minutes into the video and then have a video come out right afterwards where we're walking around looking at everything y'all have already seen. That seems boring to me. So I went ahead, got my plants laid out, have the impatience over here, ready to go in the ground right there, or over here, ready to go in this spot as well. Bananas and things going on over there as soon as the ground dries up. Y'all have already seen everything over here, I think so, yes. As well as over here, a few more things stacked up on the table. That's because I went through this spot and just gutted it. I wanted to get everything put where it needs to go, ready to get planted. There are still a few things left, which is, I mean, normal. Always have a few things left over. Things aren't necessarily where they're going to stay, but they're just more tidy. I was thinking, here's a look. Here's everything that's going on. You see the mess over here, the mess, just stuff that needs to be planted up. You've seen what's going on over here, and hopefully you remember what it looked like at the beginning of the video. It's messy from all the dirt and everything. It's junk that collects from the storms, but it is an improvement. Like, try and make a memory here little mental note of all of this, as well as all the stuff going on over here. And I'm gonna put myself to a challenge. Technically, I have a week to get all this done, to get all those impatience planted, to finish in with the annuals, to handle this spot over here, as well as all the clutter over here and start to get things looking nice again. I think it'd be a fun challenge. Let's see how much I can get done by the time that garden tour comes out. There will be more of an element of surprise instead of just this repetitious same thing going on over and over and over again. You get to see the changes more dramatically between now and then. How's that sound? I hope it sounds okay. Like I mentioned, family's coming in town in just like an hour or so. so. Everything I do out here is going to be done in little chunks when I have the free time to do so. What do you have? What is that? Stop it. You're being bad. Drop it. <sighs> I don't know if this is a grape or the inside of a rotten bird egg. Just pulled that out of his mouth. That was freaking gross. Doesn't matter either way. He shouldn't be eating any one of those things. You know, when you got guests and everything, you don't knock me out here with the camera. So give it a couple days for y'all for the next video. I have a week. See how much you can get done. I think that sounds like fun. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for your patience with just the way things have been over these last few videos. Really do appreciate it. Oh, one thing. Look at these. Look at these. Aren't these beautiful? I have a new favorite thing. Love these. I got these from Wyndon 
weather. They're solar powered. It hasn't been sunny enough to get them charged up. It's been very cloudy and bleak here, but they remind me of that Moroccan lantern that I have in the grow space, but I'm not afraid of it falling apart outside because it's made for outdoors. Very pretty, very nice. Have one there, another one dangling all the way up there, and another one here hanging from the Ed and Idiot. The ones that are by the lights probably aren't gonna light up at nighttime because they have a sensor in them, but that still, when the light was on last night, looked very pretty. Okay, now what do you have? We're full of it today. What is this? What is that, Turbo? Oh, these are peaches. <laughs> They're from the, the peach trees. I had them sitting over here and I moved them to the driveway. This is the little baby peaches that fell off. Okay, it's all right, you're a good boy. You're not in trouble. One more day. On day nine, vet said 10 days and he can get in the pool. It's so good, so good. Yes, you have. Gabba Penton is just amazing, isn't it? I love my Calm Turbo. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody again. Thank y'all for your patience and understanding. Hopefully things are gonna be so much more tidy and together in the next video and then from thereafter. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.